A Node MCU is a microcontroller kind of like an Arduino, but with an integrated Wi-Fi chip. Now this is kind of a step down from the Raspberry Pi 0W that we've showed before, because unlike the Raspberry Pi 0W which loads up in a complete Linux operating system like Kalu Linux, the Node MCU can be programmed in Lua, Arduino, or MicroPython, and is better suited for low power, kind of single use applications where it does one thing many times. We'll show you how to program a Wi-Fi link monitor that's capable of alerting you if your Wi-Fi is under attack on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In our previous guides, we've explained how easy it is to disrupt a wireless network with tools like MDK3. But depending on the way that you're detecting it, it might not be straightforward to tell if this kind of jamming attack is happening to you. In order to detect this sort of attack, you might be able to use something like Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi, but this takes a long time to start up and it also takes a lot more power than is strictly needed to do this small function. Now, Internet of Things devices easily connect to Wi-Fi in order to do small functions and don't require a lot of power, so for this application, they're perfect. Now, we'll be using what's called a Node MCU, which has a very well-documented Wi-Fi chip in it called the ESP8266. Now, this is capable of being programmed in a variety of languages like Lua, uh, Adreno, and also MicroPython, which means it's easy for beginners to get started even if they have little experience. Now, the problem we'll be solving today is to test to see if we can get a normal Wi-Fi connection on a known network that we're monitoring. And we're not going to do things like test for upstream connectivity by pinging Google or something. Instead, we're going to keep it really simple and just turn an LED indicator either to green for a successful connection or red to indicate that for some reason we're not able to connect to Wi-Fi normally. Now, as soon as we attack this with something like MDK3, we should see the LED turn red which means we need to do a little bit of wiring with the, uh, with the Node MCU in the breadboard in order to make this work. Now to get started, we'll need a Node MCU, a breadboard, and then a three color RGB LED in order to indicate when we have a successful connection versus a jammed, a jammed Wi-Fi connection. So that's all we'll need to begin. Let's get started. Now before we get started using the Arduino IDE, we're going to need to take care of a couple things first. You can download the Arduino IDE from the official website, and for the Node MCU, you're going to need to download the official firmware. Once you have these two things downloaded, make sure that you install the firmware by following the command prompts, the same with Arduino IDE. And when you have the two installed on your computer, after you reboot, you'll be able to open the Arduino IDE and find the following options. We're going to need to find the ESP 8622 uh, development package that was created to allow people with this kind of board to code in the Arduino IDE. So let's go into File and then Preferences. And we should find a whole bunch of different things we can do to add to the Arduino IDE. So here we can see the additional board manager URLs. And this is where we'll need to type in this uh, JSON data a package which points to this URL and once you copy this go ahead and paste it into the additional boards manager URL and press OK. Now when you've done this you should be able to go into the tools and then the board and you can see mine is set to the node MCU. Now you won't be able to do this right off the bat instead you'll need to go to the boards manager section here. Once you have that Go ahead and type in the search bar ESP or, yep, there you go, uh, the ESP8266 community uh, install. So once you click on this, you can see my option is to remove, but yours will be to install. So go ahead and click on this to install it so that uh, the Adreno uh, IDE will be able to understand what it is you are programming. So when you have this complete, uh, you can go ahead and close it and then go into the tools section again. And from this menu, when it pops up, uh, you will see a number of different options, but you'll need to make sure that the board that is selected is the node MCU. 
So this is the point at which you want to go ahead and plug your board into the computer uh, with the appropriate micro USB cable, and you should see it auto detected on a certain port. So I'm going to do that now. So while that's plugging in, we can look at some of the other options and you'll want to set the upload speed to 115200. Uh, the CPU frequency is set by your individual computer, so that doesn't really matter. And the rest of these settings should match what I have here, but they don't really change too much. So you can see that now my port has been auto detected and yours should look something like this when it's plugged in and powered up properly. Now, if you are using an old cable, uh, you should be aware that occasionally you'll get a cable that is just not a good fit. So if you're having issues with your board before you throw it out, uh, take a look and try just try a different uh, micro USB cable because occasionally there will be good cables for charging that are not good for data. So once your settings match this and you have installed the firmware and uh, also included the ESP8266 uh, development package, you will be ready to write your first program. So we're going to go ahead and go to one that we've already created. And we'll use that to demonstrate how we can wire up the board to be able to do a simple blink test. So this will be the first program that we'll be flashing to the Node MCU. And you can see it's pretty simple. We have two different functions that are voids, which means they don't return anything. One of them is setup and the second is loop. Now on embedded devices like this, setup will be what we do first in order to arrange everything. And then loop will be a continual thing that this thing will do. Um, and the uh, node MCE will just run this loop over and over and over according to what we define in setup. So in this setup, we're going to need to define a couple variables. First, we're going to need to set up our LEDs. So we need to decide how long they need to be on and then how long we want them off for a pulse. So in this case, I created a variable uh, that is an integer and I set it to one second for how long our uh, light will be on and then I set the time for off to um, one one hundredth of a second. So this will give us a nice little pulse and when we do pulses together, uh, it'll make it nice and short as well. So the next thing we need to do is decide what pin we want to fire this color uh, and then write a, a, a function in order to do this in a clean way so we're not reusing this code over and over. Otherwise, this is going to get really long really quickly. So we will write the two different functions that we want, red and green, and we're going to decide that D0 or pin 0 is the one that we want to control red. Now we're going to decide that D1 is the pin we want to control green, which is what we're going to use to indicate that the Wi-Fi connection is normal and working well. So we'll use this code here, which specifies uh, that we are going to bring the voltage high and then bring it back to low in order to say to the node MCU to pulse the power to high on this pin. So when we wire it all together, we'll take a jumper wire and we'll plug it in the breadboard directly either into the LCD or LED, or we'll use a um, transistor, or sorry, a resistor in this case, to make sure that we don't fry our LED if we're using one that's a little bit more fragile. Now that's not really necessary in this project, but in general, it's good to use uh, a resistor because if you have a more fragile LED, it will, it will get fried eventually. So now that we've decided on our pins, we can go ahead and also notice that at the very top in the setup, we have the pin mode set to output for both of these pins. Now, any pins you want to play with, you'll need to set the output mode in the very beginning. But once we've set the output, we've defined how long we want our light to pulse. And then we've used that variable here inside our uh, two functions we've written to control the red and green LEDs. So now, as soon as we're done with that, we can press the upload button and it will very quickly check to make sure there's no errors in our code and then go ahead and upload this sketch uh, to flash it to our node MCU. So the next step will be to start wiring everything together and seeing if this code that we've written actually works to flash the appropriate LEDs. While that's loading, we can get started wiring together our node MCU on the breadboard with the jumper wires. First, we can plug in our LED, taking care to notice which one of the wires is the longest. Now, it's important to do so because the longest wire will typically be the ground. And if you do this wrong, then you'll just be confused as to why the LED is not working. So on a breadboard, the way that the connect connectivity works is that when you plug in a pin, for example, 
to this row, the entire row will be connected to that pin. So I'm going to put in the LED like this across so that I'll be able to use a resistor properly and avoid burning out my LED with the current. So now that that's in, I'll need to plug in my ground first before I forget where I put it. And on the Node MCU, it should be the second pin in. Next, we'll take the red wire and we will attach it to the uh, pin that we decided was going to be red, which was zero. So I'll plug that in here. And then we can start probing to see which LED is connected to which wire. So by touching it, I can see that this is the blue one. The middle one is the green one. And finally, the last one is the red one. So we'll plug this one in right next to the ground, but I'm going to plug it in at the end here. And then I will use a resistor to make sure that we don't fry the LED. And I wasn't gonna do this, but I figured someone would yell at me who knows about electricity. So I'm going to try to do this properly. There we go. So now we have a resistor uh, in between, preventing the current from going directly into the LED. So I remember that the second one is the one that is connected to the green wire. So I will plug in the second resistor here. And then finally, I'll attach the green wire from the first pin over to where I put the resistor. And we can see that once I plug that in, our test program is running perfectly. Now, if this gets too complicated, you can always, again, just pull out the resistors because it complicates things a little bit. And honestly, on these RGB LEDs, it's pretty easy to just use this directly. You generally won't fry them with a node NCU because it's only like three volts anyway. So now that we have an efficient way of signaling whether or not we succeed, let's jump back into the code and see if we can write a section that this will uh, output a red or green result, depending on whether or not we're able to successfully connect to our target Wi-Fi network. So jumping into the Arduino IDE, I'm going to open a program I've written that will allow us to quickly and easily connect to a wireless network that we are familiar with. So here we go. So what this is going to do is do an initial setup loop that will have the wireless network name, the password that we're connecting with, and then initiate a couple variables like the Wi-Fi status. So we'll also need to run our pin setup again for output. So here we will specify that we want to set up pin zero and pin one as our outputs. And we'll continue by uh, connecting to a Wi-Fi network with the following commands. Now, when I was doing this, I found these commands online. And in general, if you're looking to do little things like this, there's tons of snippets of code written to accomplish small functions like this. And in general, the node MCU is really easy to do so. So I got this to work on my first try without modifying very much. So with these lines, you will also begin outputting to a serial. So what that means is you'll also be able to get information from your computer as to what's happening. So if you get a failure and the LEDs aren't just working, then you'll still be able to find out whether or not your program is working. So in this case, we'll say you are connecting to and then the network. And then we'll also be able to verify that we're connected by in the actual loop of this program saying if wireless LAN connected is true, then announce that it's true and flash green. And if else, go ahead and flash red and print to the serial Wi-Fi not connected. So with these initial, initialized and with these uh, variables introduced, we're ready to push this to our node NCU and see if we can get the result by connecting to the wireless network and greeting, getting a green flashing LED to indicate that we've got a success. Finally, we'll need to test it, but we'll save that for last. Let's go ahead and click upload, and we'll see if the node MCU is behaving in the way we expect it to. Now that we've pushed our program to the node MCU, it'll show a random color while it's uploading. As soon as it's done, we'll look to see if it's flashing the green LED we're expecting when it successfully connects to Wi-Fi. And there it is.
So now we want to make sure that we're not just getting some random LED flashing and we haven't actually successfully connected. So let's jump into the Arduino IDE and take a look at the serial monitor. Now within Arduino, you can see that under tools, there's a section called serial monitor. Now, if your uh, node MCU is still plugged in, you'll be able to see here if there's anything coming out. Now, you can see there's a bunch of random characters, and that's because the baud rate is set wrong. So let's go ahead and set it to the matching 115200 baud, and we should see suddenly everything come in with regular characters instead of random nonsense. So just like we programmed, so we could kind of troubleshoot this, uh, we have the, our IP address and the message that our ESP is connected. So that's great confirmation that our program is working. So we can go ahead and attack it in order to see if the second portion of, of actually detecting a Wi-Fi jamming attack is functioning as well. So to do that, let's go ahead and jump into a terminal window. And once we're there, we're going to be using MDK3. Now we've covered MDK3 MDK before. So in this case, we're going to be attacking channel six where our uh, device is on. And we're going to be using a blacklist I compiled before of this device's MAC address. So once we run this command, we should be able to attack it and get it to flash a red LED instead of a green one. And now you can see it's flashing red, which means that we successfully have managed to get this to attack the node MCU, and it's actually detecting the attack and the fact that it's no longer able to successfully connect to the Wi-Fi network. So let's stop this attack, and we can even look in the uh, serial that Wi-Fi is not connected, and suddenly we have green again. So now we can see that this will react to our attack and it will actually indicate to us with, by changing the color of the LED depending on whether or not the normal ability to connect to Wi-Fi is being interfered with by an attacker. Now there are some ways that this can be tricked, but in general if an attacker is using something like a disassociation packet instead of a deauth packet, rather than just looking for deauth packets, this will detect any kind of jamming that's affecting the ability to just connect to the network normally. So that's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.